sound speeds and welcome to yet another reacts video now the reason i continue to do these reaction videos is because i'm getting a lot of positive feedback from them people are telling me that they are learning a lot about what they should and shouldn't be doing by hearing my reactions and comments to those videos and i'm going to continue to do them as long as i continue to receive feedback and if you would like to ask me and submit a video that you would like me to react to, then by all means, write in the comments below, shoot me the link, or shoot me an email. Either one of those things works great. And the video we're gonna be looking at today is one that was written in the comments of one of my previous videos. Now, this video is called, No More Wires, My 100% Wireless Audio Kit for Video. It was released on August 20th, 2019, so over two years ago, and it has 162,300 95 views as of the time of this video. This is released by a channel called DSLR Video Shooter with 630,000 subscribers. Now, I am not going to just expect this video to make me mad. However, I did happen to note that I did watch this video in the past. I have no recollection of it, but according to my comment here, it's a little on the cryptic side. I don't know what I'm saying here, but if I don't have anything positive to say, maybe I'm not saying it at all. Maybe I am just not wanting to encourage. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking when I wrote this video. And since I have no recollection of it, I figure we dive right in and get a good, honest reaction to it. Here we go. Before I hit play, I find it very interesting that he calls this video No More Wires because it could mean that this is a wireless boom system and he's using wireless mics. And so it could mean No More Wires like hardlining a boom to the bag or something. I don't know, let's not speculate and let's dive right on in. This video has been in the works for a very long time and I am crazy excited to share it with you. So in this video, we're talking about a single audio kit that fits in one bag is 100% completely wireless and USB rechargeable. So. Oh no, 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 he's using wireless headphones. There's 7506s. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Oh no, 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 no. Wearing headphones, using a boom and a okay. lav what? set. You're supposed to take that up. You see the orange thing right here on the screen? You're supposed to take that thing off. That's only to keep the connector that it's on from hitting the side of the boom pole. What on earth? Okay, let's 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 see what he's doing. Is completely wireless, wire free, and it powers and lasts all day, and it all fits in this adorable little bag. So this idea came to me after years and years of doing corporate video work, documentary, interviews, and of course here doing YouTube videos. Audio gear has always been kind of that. Oh, oh that's right. We got to set up audio, and it's always kind of a last minute thought. Okay. This is one of the reasons why I always say I would rather hire a sound guy that knows about camera than a camera person that knows about sound. Because that mentality right there of, oh, now we have to set up sound. Let me, let me bring you into my world here for a second. Sound is over half of the experience of watching something because sound carries the dialogue of the show. Sound is also responsible for reinforcing pictures. So if someone throws a punch and you don't hear it make a nice bone cracking smack, then you're going to think that it could be a soft hit. If it makes a sound like like that, you're going to be like, oh, well, that wasn't very hard. But if it goes, you know, and just it sounds like it has a lot of impact, you're going to be sold on the fact that that boxer just knocked somebody senseless. The fact that he is commenting, and, oh, my gosh, you got to set up sound already doesn't make me very happy because personally, I could have gone into camera or sound when I first started my career in the film industry. I ended up in sound and I don't look back at that. Even though I would have made more money in the camera department, I don't look back at the fact that I chose sound because to me, it's a lot more, it's a lot more real, I guess you could say. I'll, I'll have to talk about that more at some other time. It's always a pain to set up. There's cables everywhere and it just becomes- Okay, he wants to talk about a, pay, a pain to set up Corporate video? I'm not even going to let him get another word in because you have to set up lighting for that. You have to set up your filter. What camera uh, uh, your lens are we going to use? What filter should we be on? Let's set your focus. And now I mean, look at him in the background. He has multiple lights going. He has this one over here. He has this one over here. Is that quicker or easier to set up than throwing a lava on someone and hitting record? Hmm. 
All right, dive on in here, Mr. DSLR shooter. That was a headache if you were more of a video shooter and you're trying to do this all on your own. So that I is correct. Okay, so now he just he he redeemed himself somewhat in that if he's a, v a video shooter, he acknowledges that he's a camera guy first. That's that's good. So let's 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 in fairness, let's see how his bag is set up. I don't want to be too critical because he ended up did you know, say the right words. He did say that he's a camera guy and he prefers camera, obviously DSLR video shooter. He's going to be more concentrating on camera world. So that's fair. I wanted to come up with a very easy to use, very flexible and wireless system that would be more enjoyable to use and a lot easier to set up. Also keep in mind that this is not the cheapest option out there and you could definitely use more affordable gear in your audio bag. So this entire setup right here has been built up to over time and it cost me about. Okay, Mix Pre 3, that's a great thing to use. Two wireless mics, not gonna even name them. Shotgun mic, not gonna name it. Boom pole setup. Power bag cables, headphone, head, okay. Mix Pre 3 is the only brand name he gave us. Okay. Cost me about 2,300 bucks, but you could easily get that down to well under a thousand. And last but not least, this is a dual system setup. I've been using this style of audio recording forever when it comes to video. I just find it's easier. Instead of fiddling with the camera, just record it into a recorder. Our software these days just links it up automatically. It's a safer, easier way to go. And someone can be dedicated working with audio instead of everyone crowded around the camera. All right, that's a good point because a, a dual setup means that you're recording video and you're recording sound and there's no connection between the two. So he's not hopping from the bag to put sound onto the camera. I approve of that. And the reason why is because you can never tell the quality of their audio recording on a camera. Cameras are obviously going to be focused more on images and the quality of the image that is being recorded. They don't care about the sound. So the preamps usually aren't as clean and it's not going to sound nearly as good as it would coming out of a bag like this. So I approve of this. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the parts used and how I set this bag up, starting with the actual bag. This is the Orca, Orca 28, yeah. and it is a phenomenal yeah. audio or bag. Orca makes it's good specifically stuff. designed for audio. So if you're coming from the mixing world, you'll be very familiar with this style of bag. There's yeah. loops on the side for using straps. You have rain yeah. covers that come with it. Yeah. And what I love about They're it is good. it has a center frame made of aluminum, so it's insanely rigid. And pretty much the entire bag can be broken into so that you can route cables and do all kinds of wild stuff. And yep. that was very important for this build because underneath these audio devices, there is a ton of cabling and it's all done, set up, ready to go. I can just grab this bag, pick the whole thing up, uh, hit the road, and it has absolutely everything I need right here. Not yep. joking. I don't need anything else. This is it for audio. Now let's get to the wireless system that is really at the heart of this entire kit. And I'm using the Deity Connect system. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up the receiver here. Okay. I'm going to mention two things. The first thing is he says that everything you need is right here in this bag. Maybe, maybe not. If you are setting this boom up on a stand, for example, you might need to carry something like a boom buddy with you in order to uh, to hold your boom onto a C-stand, in which case you might need to bring an additional C-stand for you to mount it up like that. Uh, he's using the DD Connect system, so he's committed to 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless. Now, one thing, I don't know if Caleb is going to be doing that in this video, um, and I, I, he doesn't actually need to, uh, but if he, he does need to be aware, at least, if he does end up connecting up any kind of a wired microphone, something that does involve a wire on it, you're going to have a minimum of 19 milliseconds of delay all the way up to 40 milliseconds of delay uh, between the wireless system and the wired system. So if he does end up needing to break out a cable for a, for a boom because, let's just say, he's, he's mounting it someplace, he says, you know what, I might want to hardline it. For whatever reason, he would have some delay there and he would have to add delay to the wired microphone in order to make it play right with the uh, wireless. That way, the, I know that you can phase align them in post and that's fine too. But if you're monitoring it, you're going to hear the delay and it's not going to make you very happy. And there are two transmitters, which we'll get to here in a second. This system has been really phenomenal. It is pretty much, I would say, the most flexible and most advanced prosumer or professional option available. Right okay. <sighs> prosumer, yes. Professional, no. Professional, if you use the word professional with the DD Connect system, as you know, 
because it is focused on 2.4 gigahertz, I'm pretty critical of it in 2021 as of the time of this video. You could watch my video about the BPTRX and you'll hear about that. Now, the Deity Connect system as a prosumer system, I think it's top of the line. There is nothing that can match it, especially with its recent Zaxcom licensing of their patents. There's nothing better on the market in the prosumer or consumer market. So but as soon as you say the word professional, you're comparing it to Electrosonics and Zaxcom and Wizicom. And at that point, the feature set cannot keep up right now. So obviously there's some really expensive stuff out there when it comes to wireless audio, but this whole kit is around 600 bucks and gives mm -hmm. you so much flexibility. Big so bang shout for out the to buck. Deity for sending this kit in for review. And we're going to get to kind of the pros and cons a little bit later, but in short, Oh, I would almost want to watch his review of the Deity Connect system, but let's concentrate on this one for right now. Two transmitters, a single receiver. I can control the transmitters from this receiver. It's really designed for audio bags, which I love, and that is so rare in this price range. So you can see it's a top-down setup. My main gripe with it is that it's a little bit noisy in that it has some self-noise. So if you have a very, very quiet lav mic that you love, this might not be the best system, but the microphones that come with it sound great. They're nice and loud. There's a feature in these. Loud does not mean good. The lavs that come with it or the connect lavs, they're not the best. I did a review of every deity lav out there and you can feel free to watch it. I determined that I don't like the connect lav, which sounds very much like the V lav. Uh, I very much prefer the deity uh, W lav pro and the micro even. So I much prefer getting those. I think that you should make the investment and get them because the connect lobs that it come with, you may say it's okay on the connect system. I would say upgrade him. It's going to make a big boost in that. Now, uh, depending on when he did this video and if he upgraded the firmware, if he was sent the original DD connect system when it first came out, like I was, there was a lot of noise on it. Uh, then there were some patches that came out or rather firmware updates that came out that, that used the DSP to actually lower the amount of self noise that the connect system had. And so if he is using this post that, then he's probably going to get better noise performance now than he did before. But as of now, I don't exactly know timing wise and with what the firmware is that he's using at the moment. But if he never upgraded the firmware and you're watching this, Caleb, make sure you keep the, the most current firmware on there because it's going to have the most accurate feature set. And especially since you are going to be uh, potentially probably also receiving some of the newer product line that work with the Duo RX receiver there, you definitely are going to want to 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 keep the firmware updated on all this information on, on all of this gear transmitters where you can boost the higher frequencies so if you're using the microphone underneath clothing like i try to most of the time you can boost that and get better sound so it's a great system here's the one transmitter ready to rock and roll I actually have it and as long as you're close to your talent like you would be in a sit-down interview it's going to be fine at 2.4 gigahertz the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum is getting very congested if you're working on a real film set and i mean they're using the rydell systems for example that uh the dp can talk to the he can just hit a button and talk to the entire camera department then he can hit another button talk to the gr the key grip and the gaffer and then he can talk to whoever he wants to the ad's and whoever wants to can dial in on those frequencies and listen to the conversations and even hear a Comtech feed from the sound mixer. So there's a whole bunch of things that are operating on that frequency range. Now, you may say the Rydell system doesn't actually transmit via uh, Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz. You're right, it doesn't. But each Rydell system sits on your waist. And unless you actually do the rare thing that I haven't seen very many people do on set, and that's hardline it with a headset that has a wire off of that, you're going to end up using aftershocks or some sort of a single ear with the microphone sticking off of it. And that is connected up via Bluetooth. And there's only a total of 40 potential 2.4 gigahertz channels that you can use in the 79 megahertz spectrum of 2.4 gigahertz. So that's going to limit the amount of potential bandwidth that you have there to play with on the connect system, especially if it is scanning and choosing a bunch of channels so that it can hop to up to 1600 times a second. And that the lighting team is going to be most likely using 2.4 gigahertz for their uh, communication of their iPads or their their tablet system and sending it out to their wireless, you know, remote units that they have all over the place with lights integrated into it. So here we go. Let's continue charging in the bag. We'll talk about that. I'm going to set that down over here and we're going to move on to the shotgun microphone, which I am so excited to have a wireless boom setup. So let's dive into it. 
here attached to the bag via these handy straps that actually come with the bag and it's built in, uh, we have our boom pole. So this one isn't the cheapest, but it's also not the most expensive. It is aluminum and it's very compact as you can see here. Let me for a second move our bag out of the way. And you can see there are several stages here that it can be opened up. And at the bottom here, we have our transmitter. I've okay, he's using a K-Tech boom pole, one of the small, very small ones and a cheaper one. He says it's aluminum. So that means it's either going to be an Avalon. It could, well, there's a whole bunch it could be. But um, the, the thing about aluminum, they will be heavier, but, and they're also going to be very cold in the winter. Uh, but the, the main thing that you need to be aware of here is that for whatever reason, he's putting the transmitter on the end of the boom pole as that would be on the counterweight side. With this particular setup, if you wanted to and go completely wireless all, all together, you could go straight out of the microphone that he's going to be using because I, I know he's not delivering you, he's not going to be using a microphone like a S mic 2 or a S mic 2S because he doesn't have any kind of phantom power on the BPTX right there. And because of that, you can take that transmitter, stick it straight up on the end of the boom pole on the, on the side with the microphone on it. And you may say, oh, that's going to be, you know, weighting it down the wrong end. This is a short pole. It's not going to be an issue. So the whole entire thing would go maybe six, seven feet out in length at, if that. And at that point, I mean, who can't hold an extra, you know, couple of ounces on the, the, the microphone into the boom as opposed to the, the, the other side of the boom, the, the side that you would hold. So I would almost say get rid of the internal cabling altogether. It's going to be less noise that way if you do fast cues and then just go straight out of the BPT X transmitter. Uh, uh, with the signal from the microphone uh, on the microphone end. I've got a Velcro to the actual boom with this amazing Velcro pack that I found on Amazon. And what we're doing here is... Go you see, like, here's what I'm, I'm saying right here, is this microphone should be up here, or this this transmitter should be up here where the microphone would, would attach. And yes, you would hold it here, and that would put more weight on the, the front end, but it's so much better. You don't have to worry about this internal cable, which is going to be about a hundred bucks or something like that. If you get the K-Tech version, which he's even using this on there still, but it also means that you don't have an extra cable in the whole system and you, you could put this Velcro very easily up there too. So let's, let's move on. I'm going to be adding a shotgun mic to this end and it's going to run all the way through the pole. This has an integrated cable and spit out at the other end right here and be fed into our transmitter, which will send it over to the bag. That's not the best cable to use on the, to come out of the BPTRX in there. That was a very cheap connector going into the, the CCR on the bottom of the KTEC. So interesting. So let me grab our microphone, which I have also in the bag. It fits. It would be the uh, VMic D3 Pro, part of the location kit. That's what he's going to. So he's going to have the, the pistol grip on there. We're going to talk about our shotgun microphone, which is the Deity D3 Pro. Now, this necessarily isn't uh, on the same level as some of this other equipment. It's more of an affordable microphone. But I think if you're only going to own a single microphone and travel with a single microphone, which I don't necessarily recommend, but you get the point this is a great one to go with it can be used with a camera can be used on a setup like this it has a ton of flexibility so that's that's a good point it and he's right it's very flexible and that d3 pro is a very good sounding microphone for what it is i would say that that he's spot on with you can use it on the camera if you wanted to or you can put it on the end of a boom pole so in that case it's very versatile you could save yourself from having multiple mics and that's that's a good approach remove our bag out of the way once again and I'm going to connect it to our boom pole with this awesome quick release system that I found on Amazon for around 12 bucks. So essentially you can have multiple microphones easily disconnect and connect them. So I'm going to simply pop that on. And now we have our microphone. I'm going to go ahead and open up and loosen up this Rycote pistol grip. And then I'm going to connect my XLR to it just like that and now ladies and gentlemen we have a perfectly balanced boom mic with a wireless transmitter so i'll go ahead and fire that up okay the one thing i would say he needs to strain relief this extra cable that's coming off of there all that extra cable if he has to swing around it's going to be extra noise so just take up that, that slack a little bit and that way it's not going to be an issue and now we're ready to go this see that how it's hanging down i mean sorry this is it's going all berserk i need to figure out what that setting is but um 
coming out here, all of that. You see how it's going to be laying this on the it. boom itself? It's completely wireless. This yes, it's completely wireless. Let's, it. let's brag about it's that. Wireless. But you see that, how this is jiggling so around and it's okay. touching the side of the boom right there? It shouldn't be touching the side of the boom. That's any time it's going to be touching, the, it's it's making noise. You know, you know what I'm saying? about the rest of the bag and how does this interact with it and what are we doing for monitoring for that i'm going to set my boom microphone down here and talk about the mix pre 3 which i have okay. mounted inside of this bag and again we have a top down recorder so i'm going to go ahead and fire it up here and we're going to get our levels from the microphone into this guy so i'm going to go ahead and fire up our d3 pro which also has a level control on it so if you're wireless running around and you have wireless headphones which we're going to talk about in a second uh, no let's not talk about those here's what i will say make sure that you set your level correctly at the microphone if you're going to be using the d3 pro because if you set it too low it's going to have more noise if you set it too high you're going to be sending a signal to the the recorder that's going to be too hot and maybe distort so you're definitely got to set your level appropriately so do different tests see what it sounds like what to set. i mean personally i use mine about halfway up so that way and then i make adjustments from there if i need a little bit more gain i'll add it there and i'll usually take my my, my headphones and plug directly up to the microphone itself in order to listen to it to hear what my levels sound like if i'm going to be going out of that into some sort of a recorder and once i set my level there i'm going to try not to mess with it unless i have someone who's a soft speaker i'm going to look at that and say oh i'm always going to start at level six that's going to work best on my system based on it's not going to be overly hot it's not going to be overly noisy from being too quiet and then having to boost it up that kind of thing you can, without touching your bag, make a couple adjustments, uh, which is phenomenal. So we've got our mix yeah. pre, I got the microphone on actually both of them. So if I tap here, we can see our two levels, one and two. So we're ready to record. Okay, look right here over here. This clip is left on the DXLR. Now that's not normally an issue, but I would just I would just point out that that clip does not need to be on there. And you do need to stream the leaf that. This, this cable here is gonna drive me completely crazy. If I were him, I would take this cable, loop it back up, so that way the loop goes on the outside, loops back up into the handle here, and then you can add some something like a, a bongo tie, a lasty band, use any uh, use another piece of the Velcro that you love, and just Velcro around that, so that way this connector is not going to pop out, and all of this extra slack is not going to be flopping around and hitting your boom pole in this bag. So I love the Mix Pre 3. I've been talking about it for a while. It's just a phenomenal recorder. What in it's the world? really, really flexible and the levels are incredible. So now let's say you want to run around with your freedom and your boom pull. You've got your lav, everything's wireless, but you're tied to your bag with headphones. Not anymore, ladies and gentlemen. This setup includes wireless headphone monitoring and I've got some interesting things to tell you here. So originally I was going to use a Bluetooth device for which you don't want to do. I'm glad he's not doing that. For wireless monitoring. And I did a whole video breaking down all these different options. Did find a couple that would work okay, but they weren't perfect. Another YouTuber saw that video and had the idea to try to use the Rode Wireless Go as the same system. So essentially using the Go to send the audio from a device to headphones. And guess what? It actually worked really, really well. And that guy's name is Aaron. I'll have a link to his channel in that video. You can definitely check it out. So special thanks to Aaron for uh, coming up with this idea and letting me share, you know, his video. Okay. The one thing I'll say about that is wireless monitoring and stuff. You're adding more. It's a 2.4 gigahertz system also. So you already have your wireless boom. You have your wireless lav and you have the wireless go. All of that's 2.4 gigahertz. You have three channels right there of the potential of 40 already occupied. And the wireless, I'm not 100% sure about the wireless Go system, but if it hops and does frequency hopping as well, then you're going to potentially run into any in some interference with your Connect system because they do, the Connect system will play best with anything that's connected up to it. So there's that. So what we're going to be doing is using a Rode Wireless Go system for wireless headphone monitoring. I know I'm mixing a ton of brands here, which is a little weird, but we're going to go for it. So I'm going to remove these headphones here from this awesome strap that holds them on the side of the bag, also sold by Orca. And you'll notice here that these are not wireless headphones. These are actually Sony MDR 7506s. So let's pause this thing here for a second and look at this right here. The 7506s are notorious for having these kind of pads with a pleather type material that will rub off onto your ears if you sweat. 
If you collect any kind of moisture on the inside of your ear in the summer, for example, and you get hot or sweaty, anything that you do that's going to make you hot and have hot ears and sweaty ears is going to uh, pull this little pleathery type material off of the headphones and put these little black flakes on your ear. You don't want that to happen, so I strongly recommend getting something like headphone softies and i happen to have a video about this and i'd welcome you to watch it because it's a very cheap and 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 very effective option that makes these headphones next level in my opinion it makes them so much more comfortable they're cooler in the summer they're warmer in the winter and it prevents you from having all that flake off onto your ear definitely check that video out and i released it near the beginning of this channel because I love those things so much. A legendary pair of headphones that I've slightly modified. Now you and don't I use have those to do this I yourself, don't. but I have converted the fixed cable to a 3.5 millimeter jack. This means I can use my own cables or add a wireless go to this. Yeah. Another thing you might notice that is kind of odd is I and have a, hot, a cold shoe, uh, yeah, mount, a cold shoe not super a hot glued shoe. to the side of my headphones. We're going to explain that here in a second. Yeah, that way you can have the radiation of the wireless go system right next to your head. Brilliant. So I'm going to go ahead and open the side compartment of my bag and pull out the Rode Wireless Go. Our transmitter is hooked up to my Mix Pre 3 as a transmitter for our headphone jack. So I'm going to actually clip the Rode transmitter. It's very small. It's low profile for sure. It's going to be transmitting the headphone output of my Mix Pre 3. Next, I'm going to take the receiver and I'm going to plug it into these headphones. Again, you can use any pair of headphones that has a physical jack or I suppose even, you know, a cable built in, but I want this all tidy, all attached to the headphones. Now, because I have- I mean, I admit it, it's a clear, clever system and you may be happy with it, but to me, I would want to jam up, uh, you know, any, I would not want to risk the the possibility of interfering anything in the 2.4 gigahertz realm with my DAD Connect system, especially if it's not DAD branded, because the DAD Connect system only acknowledges systems that you can plug into it via the little uh, plug-in in the front, and the wireless Go system is going to be totally independent of that. So I wouldn't do this personally. You might be fine with it though, especially if you're close to the back. Have this cold shoe on the actual side of the headphones, I can go ahead and mount this guy. So I'm just gonna simply take this Rode Wireless Go receiver and slide it right on to the headphones. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our wireless pair of headphones. You can see, I've got the tiny transmitter on the side right here. And I can go ahead and throw these on. And I am listening to these microphones. You'll see it's a little kind of funky looking, but hey, it works and it does a phenomenal job. So better than the Bluetooth systems and setups I used before. Yeah, totally. You might hear just a tiny bit of latency and that is due to the wireless system from Deity. Correct. There's 19 milliseconds delay there. As of the time of this video, there's up to 40, depending on if you're low, medium or high latency mode. That's because it's constantly checking for multiple channels. And if there's an issue, it can actually fix that or solve that before it's transmitted, which tries. is just amazing. So it tries. because of that, there is a slight, slight minuscule delay. So yeah. with that, I can put on these headphones. I can pick up this boom microphone and I'm wire free. This bag can go in the corner and I can run around monitoring my audio, which is just ridiculous and something I've never experienced before. Okay. so. <clears throat> in fairness, he can because he has a gain knob on the end of the microphone. He could very quickly put his finger fingers on the actual gain knob on the microphone if he needs to adjust it and go, whoop, let's, let's get, take it up or down a little bit. And it's going to uh, adjust that level into the transmitter. And then the level is going to be set on the, the mix pre. So it's going to be technically fine there. I don't know why he's not using the windscreen that comes with this microphone, but hey, you do you, Caleb. It's really, really awkward to be doing this, but I absolutely love it. And I'm super excited to be putting this. I tell you, it is really weird when you first start porting a microphone in your at your face when you have headphones on, you hear so much more detail than you're used to hearing because a microphone will pick it all up. And it just sounds really weird because a microphone is a mono source and it's directional. So it points at whatever you want it to. And hearing that kind of in your stereo ears is kind of a weird feel, weird feeling and sensation. System to work, which we've already been using it here in the studio. What about power for all of this? Well, that's another incredible feature about this kit 
everything either has a built-in battery or is powered over USB, and almost all of it is USB-C. Yeah. So these transmitter packs from Deity, I did the same USB-C, built-in battery. The receiver over here in the actual bag, built-in battery, and can be charged over USB. Battery life is amazing on these. The Wireless Go, built-in battery, USB-C rechargeable. Now the Mix Pre series though, in order to power you know, all the phantom power and the unit itself, you need to actually connect it up to two USB-A in order to actually power the phantom power and the unit itself. You need to have two designated lines of power coming in unless you use USB-C. And I believe USB-C is enough to perfectly power the Mix Pre. So he's going the right way if he's using USB-C to power the Mix Pre. When it comes to our microphone up here, the shotgun microphone from Deity, built-in battery, USB rechargeable. And if that was not enough, I went ahead and in the bottom of this bag, in the bowels where you can't really see it, I have a USB hub. So if I unzip this particular zipper, and we'll go ahead and just peel open this entire wall of this uh, bag over here, I've got this cable right here, this USB cable. And this cable right here is connected to everything. So if I plug this into a USB battery or the wall, so he's using this as kind of like a BDS system, like a battery distribution battery distribution system that you would use where you have normally like an NP1 battery, an audio route or something like that that would go into uh, a system that would split the power off to your mixer, to your wireless, to all the different, uh, you know, to your wireless receivers rather, and anything that you use battery wise on the, the actual bag. Him using a battery brick that, that has more than enough capability of running all day and powering anything like, you know, the Duo RX system has its own integrated battery that can last up to like 10 hours. So you don't even need to really draw battery off of the the actual uh, standalone battery that's powering the Mix Pre, but you could. You could very easily do that. You know, you don't even have to have it connected up to the Duo RX until you're needing it. And then you could very say, oh, you know what? It's starting to get on the low side of battery wise, plug it in there and it's working. But that's only if you go a really long day. But this sounds to me like a pretty good and very effective system. You can have, a, to his point, you can have a USB hub that comes out of this that splits it so that way you can charge up the transmitter on the end of your boom, the transmitter that you're using as a lob pack, and you can you could charge up your battery that's on the microphone itself, even though I think it can handle, what was it? like 100 hours or something like that, 150 hours with the integrated battery. I don't remember exactly, but it's long. This entire bag will start charging, including the receiver, the transmitters, and I can even over here in this pocket, I have extra USB-Cs waiting to be plugged into there stuff. There you go. So if I'm out to lunch, I can just take the bag with me. Again, it packs down to this really nice compact setup and charge the entire thing over lunch. So that is my 100% wireless and USB powered and rechargeable audio kit going forward. Okay. So, I mean, you know, this video, I, I honestly didn't know what to expect. I think he's thought this one out. Uh, I, I watched, uh, you know, some of the, his other audio videos and I am not 100% sold on those, but I think for this one, I think for what he's doing, he's not really doing corporate events anymore, he said, uh, but he can perfectly fine with this as long as you're pretty close to talent i think that's going to be a fine setup uh he might want to get himself something like a, a boom buddy and if he needs to connect up you know uh the system you know and and just not hold a boom forever so then an interview that's going to last a couple of hours long put it on a stand uh you know set your set your levels and take a nap <laughs> you know you can definitely do that i've done it before accidentally of course or uh you know Someone else did that, not me. I would never sleep on a job like that. But um, anyway, you 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 could if you wanted to and had the opportunity. Just don't snore. So uh, anyway, his his bag sounds very uh, effective, very affordable. It's a nice little setup, and I could I could very easily make it work as well. And uh, there's only a couple of tweaks that like I would remove this this little orange thing. I would also tie off this cable up here just for you know keeping it out of the way and then you know everything else i mean i use the windscreen on the end of the microphone but aside from that those are little small things i think he's thought it through pretty well uh for a dslr guy anyway thank you for watching this episode of sound speeds and be sure to tune in the future for more reacts videos more sound things in general and of course sound advice
Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.